is even being worshipped already and and that is what i am actually trying to prove to you in this video that when these people you see them do all these things they do or say these things that they say the only target is themselves and not christ and these are the days that you know preachers are building thrones on the altar today they sit on the thrones hello everybody good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you in the name of our lord jesus christ before you want to nail me and before you call me a hungry person and before you may even use uh, my background to mock me <laughs> You know, because I find out that people are trying to use, you know, the most, the meanest language in order to make me angry, to frustrate me. Some of you may begin to, to mock the fact that I am staying in front of an uncompleted building. Fine. See, I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing and I'm not ashamed of myself. Um, you know, and uh, I am not fake. And this video, we are going to deal with fake men of God. Fake in the sense of what they are presenting, what they are showing. They may be real, but what they are saying is presenting them in the light of fake now we're going to use the word of god to establish that i'm going to you know um be my searchlight on two self-acclaimed greatest prophets of our time and one of them is the one you know very popular hubert angel now hubert angel in case you get to see this video you may call me a small boy yes i don't know your age you may be 50 51 you are older than me but then you you cannot be my father you can at most you be an elder brother but then it doesn't matter because we are talking about the kingdom matter and those of you to whom he is papa i want you to uh, for a moment just like the lord for a moment turned his back on jesus while on the cross now can you for a moment for the sake of the gospel for the sake of your soul do as if you detach yourself from hubert angel and this other person this other prophet from uganda he is also popular now can you just in a moment of time detach yourself from them and listen to what i have to say and what they uh, they have to say in this video for just now then after after when you have digested my words and their own words you chose what you want to do can you just do that now i'm going to explain my point why i say they are not of god they are not servants of god they may have salvation jesus may have saved them jesus may have appeared to them their claims about what they have been told they are might be true but in the light and the character of the word of god according to selma the character of the word of god their words here are not true and interestingly one of them has also joined you know in the bandwagon of those that have criticized apostle paul's writing so i just want to prove to him also that his behavior on the pulpit is not right and is not consistent with the character of god's word with the characteristics of a servant no servant seeks to pull attention to himself that is what we're going to treat in this video now who is actually the greatest prophet of all time even in our dispensation and dispensation before us and before we're going to decipher that in this video out of these two men you may make choice who is one uh who is the best now and um i can only lay a, 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 a foundation you know with the scripture where jesus the lord said in john chapter 16 verse 13 when he was trying to console the, the apostles he told them that there were many things he could you know tell them but that the unfortunate thing was that they would not bear it now but when he the spirit of truth would come you see he would expound and guide them into all truths john chapter 16 verse 13 let pay attention how be it when he the spirit of truth is come let's start from verse 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come so now the emphasis is that the spirit shall not speak of himself the spirit will bear witness of jesus verse 14 says he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it on to you now does it mean that the spirit of god the holy spirit you know has nothing of himself to say of course we were told in genesis chapter chapter 1 verse 2 that the spirit of the lord moved over the waters now the spirit of god could have you know he would have chosen to tell us now let me not analyze the video yet I want you to relax and watch Hubert Angel first. Happy viewing. For what God has told me in the prophetic, I lead a dispensation. Anyone, listen, anyone can come up and be angry that angel says he leads a dispensation. I will never lie to on what God has told me. What God has told me is I'm a leader to this dispensation. 
in the prophetic there are others that are apostolic leaders there are others maybe that are prophetic teachers eh, that's another story but as the pure prophetic I'm the head of the prophetic. This has nothing to do with how many years you've been prophesying. It's the grace to lead a dispensation. It is not how sharp you are. It's the grace to be a leader. Brother Branham was a leader in the prophetic. Not because he was sharper than prophets. That's why people are trying to compare the prophecies of Branham, Brother Branham and their prophecies. Oh, wow, wow. This one mentioned 70 names. Brother Branham only mentioned two things or three things. That's not what made him sharp. Let me show you. Let me show you. You see that? Put it in the order I gave it to you. Just put number one only. All right? There is a video for it, but I don't, I don't have time to give you the video. It would have been brilliant for me to give you the video or rather to put his face against it so that you see it. It's called Catalina Mountains. I believe you can actually see that this was a message that he prepared from his house. That this is not, it wasn't as if he was preaching something else and maybe he branched from what he was preaching to I digress to this point. For him to have come with a slide from home and he has given it to the media guy and you know, in order according how he wants it to be displayed. It means that that was what he prepared from his house, how to preach it. I don't actually know the title, but you can understand that. This was a message that was prepared to solely project and promote the image of a man and the not of Christ. Of course, I wish I could open this thing so that you see. You see, I know you are not seeing it. At the top there, there is a face. There is a head and a nose okay bring the other one so that they can see it that is the face of brother Branham when God created Mount Catalina he put the face of a prophet who was going to come thousand years later ah. an angel took him to a mountain and put him inside and there is a rock that was already created as a bed for him and he was given the revelation of the pyramids and above that bed a bed there is a pyramid looking down he had preached it he had said it and god said i'm sending you where you will pray this is the location <laughs> you think you are the same men of god are not created equal now to prove how important this topic is to our guy here our man of god here uh speaking that in the congregation was not enough so he must have to drive it home so that if you missed it on that service day you wouldn't miss it during the studio section so we had to emphasize on that very very well well i don't know what is being dragged here but all i know is that these are just uh ways and uh, systems and ideas of driving attention to self and not selling or marketing the christ now actually this is demarketing christ and marketing the man and at the end of the day the question should be is he really a servant of christ because very soon we may even hear that christ was not was not too right in all the things he said of course we have heard him say uh things that look like christ was not born again that jesus was not born again all right and the question should be does jesus need to be did he need to be born again he was sinless and because he was perfect and pure his blood only was deemed perfect and qualified to take away the sins of the world so maybe tomorrow we will actually begin to hear other things it may not come from him it may come from others all right because now since the bible is no longer correct according to their own doctrine and there are groups there are groupings you know where we have you've been angel as the prophet to the last dispensation mm -hmm. then you've got other prophetic teachers uh prophetic apostolic people they have their own dimensions mm -hmm. maybe they are also called prophetic teachers of mm -hmm. the last dispensation i don't know but i know when it comes to the prophetic what god told me i'm the last prophet to the last dispensation Amen. Amen. so i'm not saying i'm the only prophet these people get it wrong Maybe they are apostolic teachers who are apostolic teachers. This one is this one, this one is this one, and they are given as a category of what they need to do. Mm -hmm. I was given this. I remember when Pastor Ben Hinn took me into um, a room one time. No, we were in, um, in um, uh, RV. We went there, and he said, God has sent you to bring relevance to the prophetic. He said, it's become, It has become about names of people, uh, mm -hmm. which is brilliant, but it has become too, too myopic. And God is telling me, You are the guy. But he is saying he didn't know what he was saying is mm. as in he knew what god had told him but he didn't know what i knew of what he was saying mm. when you hear pastor chris said 
most remarkable prophet of in the church today. Mm. These are generals. Yes. When you hear the likes of Rodin Howard Brown mm. saying, there is not a man that I've seen as anxious in this office as this one mm. since the time of Branham. Mm. When you hear the same being echoed by Cobus Van Ransberg, mm. who said, I've known of men that I've actually seen in the spiritual realm, like Brother Branham. But since the time of Brother Branham, no one is risen like this one. Mm. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about what they said. I'm not talking about me, my, about myself in that way, like me saying it. Mm. These are men of God that have been told by God. Mm. When you hear the likes of Bishop Oyedepo speaking, you are the biological microphone by which God speaks to his people. Oh. Listen to me. There is a move of the Spirit. <laughs> You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. You know, um, this is not the first time that you may have been hearing, you may have heard Hubert Angel say something like this. I remember I made a video here about this when, after he made that, I think a few days later, I don't know how, uh, you know how old it was uh when you uh suleiman you know responded and said you are not the father of prophetic he didn't call his name and um i i beg to know or to find out who else you know he was talking to us at that time who claimed also to be the father of the prophetic and you see in all his social media handles and you know the reportage or whatever post that they make they put the tag godfather of the prophetic as in for Hubert angel so maybe before they became friends before they came together as one uh that probably was when that thing happened but then we have another prophet his name is elvis mboye before i bring his own statements and his own uh, bragging it is proper that we lay a proper foundation of the man the proper foundation i want to lay is to show you the kind of a person he is he's uh he's even being worshipped already and and that is what i am actually trying to prove to you in this video that when these people you see them do all these things they do or say these things that they say the only target is themselves and not christ and these are the days that you know preachers are building thrones on the altar today they sit on the thrones and this is a man that will you know stick out his uh, foot and members will begin to kiss his leg kiss his shoes you know with their with their mouth with their lips all right so if he has not successfully printed himself on the heart of the people like i am the point i'm driving here this is just the point i'm driving, driving here and I'm, I'm not i'm not telling you things that you can you will not find in this video this is the man himself being worshipped here and i know that there are some persons who would not also say something wrong with it i understand because it is not even though it's not god's fault there are those whose brains have stopped working has stopped working it stopped working several days ago several years ago when the demon of religion was used to hypnotize them so their brains were were taken and filled you know this the, the the space for their brains has been evacuated it is filled with water so they don't reason for themselves now it is whatever their prophets tell them that is what they you know they do now listen to uh this guy elvis and boy and you, you tell me yourself you tell me yourself, you know, who do we now take? Because the two of them said God told them. So if God has told them the same thing, that God must be a confessionist. But I know he's not the God of heaven. He's not the God of the Bible. He's not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is not an author of confession. Here is Elvis Simboy. I am not a congregational prophet. I'm a prophet of this generation. And there is no one, no prophet on this earth that has any near authority to this authority i'm telling you i know where they i know where they end and i know when it comes to serious matters who god has in mind eh? and i'm not saying i'm the only prophet but i know i know the capacity i occupy and so when i say something about a situation no one can say something contrary if anyone says anything contrary then we wait and see and then you will see who is supreme? I'm telling you that these things are so simple, but you need the key. And the master key in the whole world, it is here. <laughs> Hallelujah! You will hear a prophet somewhere in the world, another genuine prophet, authentic prophet. Presuming this, I'm telling you it is here. 
Master key of prophecy, it is here. I'm telling you. You know why I speak like that? Because I know where I'm speaking from. Hallelujah. For starters, I deal with God. And then I fall my way to the throne of God. And the Lord himself directly said, you are a prophet to the nations. I know it. I do not guess myself. I do not like it. And somehow I followed. No. And then to cap it all up, there is no prophet in the contemporary days. I can even add back then. Who has prophesied? Like this prophet. Everything who has been as consistent. There is no, I'm telling you. Not now, not in history can you find. The authority and the magnitude of the glory. I'm not, okay, I'm bragging, but I'm telling you the truth. Now, like I have said, um, my primary focus on this is how does this, that the subjected crowd, did you see the magnitude of the crowd at that crusade ground? Did you see the number of persons that were on that free field? And what benefit would that do to them spiritually? If that was a crusade ground or even a church service, how would that significantly boost their faith in Christ. Now, if you are being sincere with yourself, like I said, please detach yourself for a moment. If you love them so much, I don't hate them either. But, you know, now ask yourself, you who may have heard this, you have, may have listened to them, you may have heard them say this. Now, what does it do to you? Your thinking and your understanding as a person, what effect does it have on you? I would like you to sincerely answer because the truth is that these are tactics that these men use to make you believe them more. It makes you trust them more. Even, even, you know, makes it that when you're supposed to pray to God, the God that they claim to serve, the God that they claim to, that, to have spoken to them, now you are, you are almost attracted to believe that the impossibility lies with them. And that is why when they sell hanky, when they sell apron, when they sell oil, when they sell water, when they sell salt, whatever they sell, whatever they ask you to do, you buy, you do without asking questions because you believe that they are closer to you, closer to God than they are, you know, than you are to God. Now, a perfect scenario where that happened, which was not the fault of the man. And that is what you're going through. When the Lord came down at Mount Sinai, he wanted to address the, the you know, the, the assembly of Israel. Now, when he started speaking, Moses was a man of like passion as they, as they were, but they ran away from the voice of God and they told Moses, you go and hear him. We don't want to listen to this God that is speaking like thunder, lest we die. So the voice of God now would kill them. You know why? They are not they were not conversant with that voice. They were not they were not in relationship with the owner of that voice. Moses, who was in relationship with him, Moses who has related with him, you know, could comfortably stay in his presence and he even stayed closer than the, the, the assembly of Israel, you know, was to the mountain, and yet he had not died. The same Moses spent 40 days and nights in the presence of this God. He did not die. Now they sent him, go and hear him and come and relate to us. Now that is what you are enacting. But the Bible tells us that when Jesus, the night that Jesus was crucified, that the temple curtain, the, the temple curtain tore from top to bottom. It got destroyed from top to bottom, meaning that God himself tore it from his throne. He tore it. So that means that you can access God. And like I started, the scripture I started with, there is nothing else that will make a man to speak for himself, to speak of himself, if it is not pride, if it is not hidden pride. Jesus the Lord, and here is why I say they are not of God. If Jesus the Lord said that the spirit of truth that will come will not speak of himself, but will speak of Jesus. Now, whatever the spirit gets from him, he will speak. And he will not say anything about himself, but about the Lord Jesus. Now, look at what Jesus himself said in John chapter 7 verse 18. John chapter 7 verse 18. In verse 18, he says, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Should I read it with a different version? He who speaks on his own authority seeks to win honor for himself. So have you seen it? Your prophets are seeking to win the honor, your honor for themselves. He whose teaching originates with himself seeks his own glory. But he who seeks the glory and is eager for the honor of him who sent him, he is true. And there is no unrighteousness or falsehood or deception in him. So when these men have started, have stopped preaching Christ, 
and they are preaching about the anointing and their calling how great they are you see the man even the 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 elvis boye now went even backward that means that he could even more prophetic than isaiah's of this world the jeremiah's of this world the the ezekiel's the elisha and the elijah of this world the major prophets we had uh, their stories in the bible he could be stronger and more unique than they but those men never spoke of themselves those men never risked the, the risk they took they took it for the name of the lord to be heard but look at a man standing before you telling you yes i'm bragging but then we can even extend it backward and even at the present now i want to ask for him that means that after him there may not be any prophet yet i've not heard of him this video is the first time i'm coming across him so that makes him you know that makes him insignificant that he claims what he claims is insignificant so jesus said he who speaks on his own authority seeks to win honor for himself now uh, msb said a person making things up tries to make himself look good but someone trying to honor the one who sent him sticks to the facts and doesn't tamper with reality so you know by extension they are liars by extension the things they are saying is not true apostle paul told us in uh first corinthians chapter 3 in verse 21 he said let no man glory in man and i'm talking to you now he said, let no man glory in man you i am telling you don't glory in man why do, why why did that come about it came about because there was this kind of carnality in the church if you read from verse one it, it said and i brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ i have fed you with milk and not with meat for hitherto ye were not able to bear it neither yet now are ye able for ye are yet carnal now i i love how this version puts it amplified say for you are still unspiritual having the nature of the flesh of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses for as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrongling and factions among you are you not unspiritual and of the flesh behaving yourselves after a human standard and like mere unchanged men verse 4 for while one said i am of paul and another i am of apollos are you not unspiritual are you not carnal now those of you that will want to type to defend this or that because you think i am jealous because you think you know i don't have the gift they claim to have and i want to even ask you what significance has that gift made in your life write it in the comment section tell me tell me what that their so-called prophetic you know bragado or whatever prophetic prophetic forensic prophetic expertise prophetic greatness prophetic uh, uh masterpiece i don't even know the word to use to qualify them anymore now what has that brought into your life what has it done to your life how has that their gifts that thing they brag about how has it changed your life how has it made a difference in your life what have you benefited from this thing if you were in the service or you have listened to them talk this jargons here I call it jargons because that it, it, it that is what it is. Anything that does not edify, that does not glorify, that does not build up, that does not add, you know, uh, uh, um, to to the life of a child of God, is not worth listening to. What you know, once it is coming from a so-called servant of God. So the Bible says, while one said, "I am of Paul," and another, "I am of Apollos," are you not carnal? This thing you are doing now, some of you are doing now, was what they were doing in those days. Some were fighting against those that said they were of Paul, and some were fighting of those that said they were of Apollos. And when Apostle Paul came, Apostle Paul is not like this, your, your prophets and pastors that are even encouraging you to go after those that are speaking against them. Apostle Paul says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. And mind you, these people were even fighting for the people through whom they heard the gospel. But I, I can prove it. I mean, I can challenge you. Tell me if it was you, but angel you heard that made you give your life to Christ. And it, are, you, are you even sure that you are saved? You are not even so sure you are, you are saved. You are only banking your, your salvation experience based on what you think, based on what you are told. But if ever, even however, that it was Hubert Angel that made you believe in Christ, put it down in your comment section. Beyond Hubert Angel, all these flamboyant preachers, preachers that are preaching themselves and are not preaching Christ. Who then is Apollos? Who is Paul? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. 
I have planted, Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then, listen to this. Neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. In other words, Hubert Angel, with all his gifts, uh, is nothing. Hubert Angel, every symbol, with all their prophetic gifts, are nothing. Now, if it comes to, to them trying to, you know, make themselves more important than Christ, the Bible says they are nothing. Now, Apostle Paul is not implying here that they are, that they, they are non-entities. No. But in the service of God, see, that is what 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 says. Henceforth, we know we know man by the flesh. Henceforth, we don't want to know any man according to the flesh. Whatever you were before you came to Christ is nullified at the foot of the cross. Whatever you were, you know, the, you know, prior to you coming to Christ. Now, everything, because all belongs to Christ, whether you are high or low, whether you are you have a bad record, you are a thief, you are an outcast, you are a business mogul, you are a president, you are a governor. In Christ Jesus, there is no, no gap. There is every, you know, the bridge has been, has been narrowed. No, no space for anybody to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Now, he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, I cannot finish this, 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 this chapter. Now, the Bible says, he goes down in verse 21 and says, Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Uh, let me read it in Amplified. So let no one exalt proudly concerning men, boasting of having this or that man as a leader. For all things are yours. All things are yours. And if all things are yours, the Bible says in, in verse 23, And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Verse 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours all right and we are christ's okay so now Ap apostle paul talked about glory in boasting he said we should glory in the lord we should glory in the lord in second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 i will read verse 17 and 18 but he that glorieth let him glory in the lord for not he that commendeth himself is approved but whom the lord commendeth this is simple enough for you to understand but msb says what you say about yourself means nothing in god's work it's what god says about you that makes the difference and so verse 17 says if you want to claim credit claim it for god you see you see the bragging you see you see the emptiness it is quite unfortunate it is quite unfortunate the emptiness of their bragging is not sitting in second corinthians chapter 11 i read verse 30. you know there is no time i'm not sermonizing you but i'm, I'm I, I just want to prove to you that these guys are not of god if i must need glory i will glory of the things which concern my infirmities i do not know all these testimonies that they now listen no, i'm not saying that it is wrong for a man to share testimonies of what god has done with him through him and for him now if it is to edify the people fine but you know that there are some of these stories that they tell in order to channel attention to themselves just like what you have seen now they are not even telling you stories of what god has used them to do they are telling you what god told them god called hubert angel and told him that that in this dispensation is the greatest and the other one too you, you consider this now before you go ahead to defend them please can you just consider this apostle paul if you read the entirety of this verse of this uh of of, of uh, i mean uh uh, uh what, what is it called uh second Corinthians chapter 12 if you read the entirety look at the experience that apostle paul had and if you're not even careful you wouldn't know that apostle paul was talking about himself now but consequently because god cares so much about our humility in that second corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 he says it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory i will come to visions and revelations of the lord now there are so many things he has experiences he has had but he said it is not it is not profitable for him true there is nothing to be gained by it but as i am obliged to boast i will go on to visions and revelations of the lord then he began to tell us you know how that he knew a man in the flesh 14 years ago that was taken to the third heaven and he tried to cover it up he, he was trying now um you know not to to, to make it look like uh, he was trying to boast and that's why he started if from that verse one msb said you forced me to talk this way and i do it against my better judgment but now that we are at it i may as well bring up the matter of visions and revelations that god gave me 
the, the, the other day, somebody said Jesus told him, Jesus came to him. And all of the time, they, 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 they want to present the picture. God told him, 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 God, God told him. Our God is not a talkative. Every time he's going to them, every time he's going to them. And things he will tell them, oh God. Apostle Paul never talked about this 14 years ago, 14 years ago. And because of what the church in Corinth, the, you know, said or, or, or did, they pushed him to begin to talk about this experience. And in verse he said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. I don't intend to, to, to read it. You can read it yourself. But let us go to verse 6 and 7. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. You see that? Should I desire to boast, I shall not be a, wit a witless braggart, for I shall be speaking the truth. Let's go back to KJV. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So Apostle Paul knew the consequence of telling these extraordinary experiences, talking about them. He said, because I don't want anybody to rate me higher than who I, he ought to see me, higher than the person I am supposed to be, so I will not talk about it. And he never spoke about it. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this, let me stop it here. So now from all the scriptures that we have considered, Tell me one scripture that supports what these men are doing. When people will have opportunity to speak to hundreds of thousands of persons. Now, as they, as they were ministering to that great multitude that gathered in that meeting, there were others streaming online. Some on Facebook, some on YouTube, some on X, some on TikTok, and other social media platforms, and some also through Zoom. And you don't have any other thing to tell them, but to begin to tell them that you are the highest prophet. I mean, check it now. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. There are sinners waiting to hear the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Jesus saving grace. And you have the opportunity to talk that, to tell them that. There are, there are young believers in the congregation that need to hear how their faith in Christ should be established, how they should move from point A to point B. And you're not telling them that, you're only telling them how to depend on you, how to know that you are the best. So that the next time if you ask them to empty their bank account, they will do that because you are the mouthpiece of God. May the good Lord give you understanding that I want to defend them <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You know what? It is better. You see, I, I don't do this because I love everybody. And actually, when I talk about those that, that defend these people, I don't talk about them because I want them to stop. I mean, that I'm afraid of what they're doing. I truly want them to stop. I truly want them to, to have understanding. I truly want God to, I mean, to minister understanding to them because they're not having understanding. They are not, they, 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 they are not, they are not making use of their God-given senses. I'm not saying this, you know, being abusive, but there is no other way I can put it. Now, it is because you have been bewitched. It is because you've been hypnotized to believe so many lies. That is why you are, you are at the business of trying to defend things you are not supposed to defend. Defend Christ, my friend. Use the word of God. If you think I am wrong. Tell me through the word of God. Don't just come and type and abuse me. Don't just come and, and type in, you know, call me names and all that. The names you're calling me does not make any difference. But the unfortunate thing is that at the end of the day, the men you are fighting for may repent and make peace with God and go to heaven. But you will be hating on me. You, anytime you see my notification, you know, you may want to, that, that, that idiot, you call me an idiot, that fool and all that. You have bitterness in your heart against me. And you hate me for telling you the truth but the man that you are defending has made peace with his god and probably is on his way to heaven and you are hating on me because of the man you don't know what i have just told you is the truth if you want to fault me please fault me with the scriptures and i wait i await your your comment in the comment section thank you so much and god bless you i'll be seeing you in the next video till then remember blessed remember rapturable in jesus name from me to you. Shalom.